بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Islam is to establish the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone to direct all of our worship our submission to him alone now part of this is also how we deal with other people Islam is not just our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes we establish the oneness of Allah but at the same time that faith when it goes into the heart and we have that mindfulness and we establish the rituals of Islam this translates into how we deal with other people how we speak how we behave right that mindfulness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's watching me, he's hearing everything that i do so this translates into how we deal with him first and foremost at the same time how we deal with other people as well so that's why you see there's this rich tradition in islam when it comes to good mannerisms and encouraging us to adorn ourselves with these beautiful characteristics from the hadith is when the Prophet ﷺ said that there is nothing that is heavier on the scale than good mannerisms. Husnul khuluq. So what is husnul khuluq exactly? The scholars they define husnul khuluq as when you do good towards other people and you restrain your harm from them. So you restrain harming them. And you have joy in your face when you meet other people. And while this might sound simple, it's not to be able to deal with people consistently in this manner. And when the Prophet ﷺ was asked that what is the thing that enters most people into Jannah, he said taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that mindfulness, the conscience of Allah, establishing the rituals, the commands, staying away from that which is forbidden, and the good manners. And when he was asked what is that that enters most people into the hellfire, he said it is the mouth, and the private parts because people are unable to restrain themselves of how they speak about other people the bad language backbiting slandering so on and so forth and also indulging in that which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden and in another hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the closest people to me on yawm al qiyamah will be those with the best mannerisms and this is something that we have to work towards. We have to strive to adorn ourselves with these things. That when people act ignorant in front of us, you know, we are still forbearing. And this is a sign of strength that a person is in control of themselves. That despite what's going on around them, they are the ones who still choose for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show the beautiful characteristics. And you see in the Quran, there comes a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and just to give some context in this verse, this comes after a whole set of verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes proof of His oneness, that He is the one who is worthy of worship, and negating all other false gods, that how they are unable to harm to do anything. Then after this comes this verse. This verse deals with the mannerisms. Where it says, خُذِ الْعَفُو Take that which is easy from people. You know, when you deal with people, that which they can do, take that from them. وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُفْ But at the same time, you know, encourage, inspire people to act upon that which is good. All the things that Islam encourages to act upon that. وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ And turn away from the ignorant people. You know, don't fall to their level. When they act ignorant, when they act stupid, don't fall to that level. Be better than that. And this can only happen when a person is sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're trying to play at excellence, at ihsan. When this verse was revealed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to Jibreel and he said, Ya Jibreel, what is this? And Jibreel alayhi salam, he replied and he said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding you to pardon, to overlook those who have wronged you. And to give to those who have cut you off. Those who are not giving to you, you still give to them. And to maintain ties of kinship with those individuals who have cut you off. Right? So you see, this is like the pinnacle of iman, of faith. And it is extremely difficult, but at the same time, that is why the reward is so high. The closeness to the Prophet ﷺ in Jannah. You know, having it being the heaviest thing on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And during the time of Umar bin Khattab, when he was the leader, Amir al muminin So there was a man by the name of Al-Hur ibn Qais. And this was one of his confidants, somebody who was on the Shura because he was from Ahl Al-Quran. So Umar used to have those people who knew the Quran, who acted upon it. He used to keep them close to him to seek counsel from them. So his uncle visited him one day. 
Al-Hur ibn Qais's uncle. And he said, since you're you know, close to Umar, allow me to come with you. And you know, I want to speak to him, so you know, take me with you so I can talk to him. So Al-Hur took him, and then he went to Umar and he told him that, you know, you do wrong to us. You don't give us our haqq, and you are unjust towards us. And Umar al Khattab, he started getting angry. And Al-Hur, he noticed this, and he told him, Ya Amir al muminin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Quran, he commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to khudhi al-afwa, you know, this verse, khudhi al-afwa wa'amur bil-urfi wa'arid anil jahilin, that take that which is easy, you know, and command that which is good. Encourage people to do good, wa'arid anil jahilin, and turn away from those who are ignorant. And he said, this individual is from the ignorant people. And him being Amir al mu'minin you know, he could use his authority to do whatever he wanted with this individual. But when he was reminded of the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he acted upon it right away. And one of the great scholars by the name of Abu Muhammad ibn Abi Zayd al-Maliki, he said that, you know, I looked at all the ahadith regarding the good manners, because there's so many of them that encourage us to adorn ourselves with the beautiful mannerisms. And he said, I noticed that they go back to four ahadith. And the ulama, they said about this, that whoever memorizes these hadith and establishes them in their life, then they have combined the good mannerisms and good characteristics. And these hadith, we're going to look at them in more detail in the upcoming video. So we'll dedicate one video per hadith. But just as an introduction to what these hadith are, the first hadith is when the Prophet wasallam said that, كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ That whoever believes in Allah and the last day, then let them speak good or remain silent. And this hadith encourages us towards communicational mastery, to have control over our tongue. The next hadith is when a person came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, give me advice. And the Prophet ﷺ said that don't get angry. So he repeated his request and the Prophet ﷺ kept saying that don't get angry. And this shows emotional mastery. The next hadith is the Prophet ﷺ said, مِنْ حُسْنِ الْإِسْلَامِ الْمَرْءِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِي that from the goodness of a person's Islam, that you see signs of a person improving in their Islam, moving towards Ihsan, is that they leave off that which does not concern them. So this shows that focus mastery, that they know they have clarity in where they're trying to go to. They want to get to Jannah, they want to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, the hadith, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه That none of you will truly believe, will reach the pinnacle of Iman until they love for their brother that which they love for themselves. And this shows the pure heart. That the heart is pure, it loves for other people that which it loves for themselves. And if we establish these hadith in our life, the way we deal with other people, our family, in our communities, you know, in our work, in our careers, will transform these areas. So we'll look at each of these hadith, we'll break it down so that we can go and implement it on a practical level as well. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.